This is the most affordable Lexus that you can buy, the UX. And for this year, it gets a brand new name, 300H. Why? They didn't change anything up front. They didn't change anything back there, but they did change the powertrain system. It now has the same hybrid system as the Toyota Prius. Little bump in horsepower, little bump in gas mileage. And I'm gonna show you everything about this car so that you can decide, would you choose this over a Prius? Lexus calls this color Copper Crest. And this UX300H is all wheel drive, comes with a 2.0 liter four cylinder hybrid engine with 196 horsepower and 139 pound feet of torque. Gets a CVT transmission, goes zero to 60, 7.9 seconds. So they did stay under the eight second mark, just barely. Fuel economy, 44 in the city, 40 on the highway for an average of 42 miles per gallon. And we have averaged over 43 miles per gallon over the last week driving this car. So it is awesome. And that's another reason why I think I would choose this over the Prius. Let's take a look at the cargo space back here. There is a look at the back. It's got these kind of wings up here on uh, tail lights or fins, whatever you want to call it. Kind of gives it a, a unique look from this angle. All right, in the hatch, got a powered lift gate here. Back here, you have 17 cubic feet of space. It is okay, it's decent. But one thing I did find out, you can get more space in this, but it's just kind of a hassle because you have to know you need more space. But if you take this carpet and pull, get it out of here, and then you look down here, you got a handle. All right, we're gonna lift that up, and underneath there, you do have about three or four inches deeper pocket down here to use. This is the little cargo cover to kind of block out so people can't see what you got in here, but you can see if you plan it, you can take this whole thing out, and that way you have more space for your groceries if you would need it. But other than that, good amount of space. Now they really didn't give us numbers on what it looks like with the seats down. I'm gonna drop those for you. So there you can see a uh, decent amount of space, not a complete flat floor. You can see how this is raised up and kind of drops back down through there. But you're probably looking at somewhere around 36 to 40 cubic feet of space with the seats down. If you're enjoying the video so far, please hit the like button and then join me inside. Right, it is time to take a look at the interior. This kind of has a camel tan colored interior in it going along with this black. I don't prefer this. I think it's a little too yellow. I think it'd be nice if they were a little bit darker, a little bit more brown. But the door is very simple. Now you can see why this is the most affordable UX because there is nothing going on here, just a handle. There's no buttons in anything on the door panel, but it is soft to the touch. It is not hard, so that's a plus. And then you've got hard plastic down here, but this there's your bottle holder and you got all your window and mirror controls right here in the door. Now we'll take a look at these seats. Here are the seats you have powered seats on the driver's side with lumbar and i believe you do have power on the passenger side also now there's those seats like i said i'm not a real big fan of the color but they are very very comfortable i felt really comfortable in our two and a half hour mile per gallon test drive really nice okay here is a quick glimpse of the interior and then we're going to crawl in and get a closer look now i really do enjoy this interior it is laid out it's set up very very nice and this is one of our favorite things so this is just a soft material but we really like the look of it and it just really looks pretty cool now my wife made a comment that it might attract dust but we really do like the way it looks and you know of course this is way back here and this is even soft back here this is not hard either so very premium interior in here. Underneath here, you do have a glove box down here. It is hard plastic, but you got a button right here to push. And there you go. It's not very big and it's got a lot of manuals in it. <laughs> okay, we come across and there is your, I believe a 12.3 inch screen. And I think this one was optional on here. 
Go over here to your driver's display. So this is the same system that Toyota and Lexus use all of the time. And it works really good. And I don't know why there's glare on it because I am not in the sun, but over here on this side, it has all your hybrid information. So you have your miles per gallon there. It'll tell you when you're using the power band and when you are getting regen braking, which is really nice. It has, it has a really good uh, regen braking in it. Over on the right side, this is showing your power system. So when the engine is running, it will let you know that it's driving the wheels. When the battery is going, it will also let you know that it is controlling and helping power everything. Right now, we are running off of the battery. You can see down the corner here, it says EV down in the corner. Now you can adjust the center screen. Um, and you press up here, you can go to left or right and you can adjust some of the preset screens. So some of this stuff is pretty interesting to, be, to see. And then if you hold OK, now you can change the center screen. It could be blank. You have the map, driving support, which is your driver assistance, and that's it there. If we go over, over on this side, now we can make adjustments here. You can check the G-Force, an energy monitor that's just like the same that's over there on the right. So you can set these up however you would like to see them. Navigation, there you put your driver assistance over there. We'll go back to the EV ratio and fuel economy. And then all of those same things are on the other side and you just go over by pressing these buttons over here and it'll move it over there and then you can change whatever you wanna change over here also. Okay, so we're gonna pan back. Now, the first thing I see right now is the stocks. Looks really good. I can actually see most of this one here and I can see most of this one here. So those are nice, they're in a good spot. So you got all your driver assistance features on this side and you do have lane centering and lane, you do have lane keep assist and lane centering in this. And then on the other side, you have all your stereo and menu buttons and all of that on the, over here. So now we'll look at this 12.3 inch infotainment screen. It runs the same system that Lexus has been running and everything the last several years. And right now I don't have my phone connected because it's too far away, but this does have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You got navigation, you go here, you can choose your sources, you can have your phone, and then we go into car, vehicle. So this is your trip information. You can see we're averaging about 43 miles per gallon. And we go to current. And so you can do, it keeps track of all of that. That's really nice. If we go into settings though, we can go down here and this is where you can change all of the stuff that you would like to change. So here in the vehicle customization, this is where you can make adjustments to your heads up display, your meter, your lights, illumination, door control, boarding and exit, tire pressure, climate and utility. Go on down farther, you have your driving assist. So you can set, change those settings there. And then you can go on down and you check your software apps and everything like that. But you can see this actually works really well. It's pretty snappy. Haven't had any issues with it, but the system just works really well. We come back here and you do have climate control buttons all across the bottom, which I really do love that. that they didn't integrate that into the top screen. So then we come on down here and I have my, my sunglasses wedged in there, but this is a wireless charging pad right there for your cell phone. And then you've got two USB-Cs right here and these are charge ports. Two cup holders, which are in a decent spot, but if you have a big cup, it's going to block your climate control. So you wanna make sure you have that set before you put your drink in there. And it's possible that it could hit the buttons if you're putting your drink in and out. That might cause a little bit of a problem. Here is the shifter that Toyota and Lexus has been using lately. I've actually gotten really used to it and I kind of like it. It's small and just not in the way and it's easy to use. So, um, And then here you have all of your heated and ventilated seats and your heated steering wheel. It's nice to have them on auto because they will turn on and off whenever your body gets hot or your body gets cold. 
and then you have EV mode. Now, when you put this in EV mode, now you can't just drive in full electric the entire time until it runs out. Um, you will, it will put it in full electric, but it's only at a certain speed. I'm pretty sure that it's only, it's under like, uh, 30, 25 or 30 miles per hour. And you'll be able to go maybe a mile or two. So you might be able to cruise through town. Uh, but if you give it a lot of gas, it's going to override that and kick in the engine. So, um, just so you're aware of that. And then you have auto hold back behind. Inside here, you have a little hidden spot right here, maybe for your key fob. That's pretty cool. And then you've got this little cubby hole in here. It's not huge, but it's a decent amount of space. I've got safety glasses, a badge, and a charging cord in there. And then this also has a USB-A in here, along with a 12-volt plug. So this, I believe, is the only USB-A in the car. Also, this one did, was optioned with a sunroof. Here is your traction control on the side of the steering wheel. And then on this side, that is your drive modes. <laughs> I guess I should have mentioned that earlier. So now that is the last of everything up front. And you can see that it is pretty simple up here. It's nothing crazy, but it just looks nice and everything feels nice. I like the textures. I like the way that it's set up and designed. Uh, it just works really well and I feel comfortable in here, um, which is why I say that this probably would be like, you know, an upscale version of the Prius. The gas mileage isn't quite what Prius gets, but this is a lot better ride, a lot quieter interior, and I think I'd feel more comfortable driving this every day. But what about your passengers? So I'm six foot tall. I'm going to hop in the back and we'll see how much space is actually back there. Okay, now the door's kind of got a narrow opening, uh, so it's probably a little tough for car seats. The driver's seat is in my driving position. Like I mentioned, I am six foot. Now, you can see my knees are kind of smashed up into this seat. Now, I could probably sit this up just a little bit better and maybe give a little more room for this person back here. Um, but my niece, uh, that was 11 years old, she sat back here and didn't have any problems. She had plenty of room with her knees. So it's fine for mid-sized adults, maybe to up to around 5'10", but past that, you might have a little trouble sitting back here. Now my headspace though is, yeah, I've got a good inch and a half above my head, so that is perfectly fine. All right, now, there are a few things back here, so let's check them out. All right, there are a couple vents right down here, and then you do have two USB-C plugs right down there. And then basically, as you kind of come around here, you can kind of see the door panel there, and you do have a center armrest with two cup holders in it. But other than that, they seem to be pretty comfortable. No one has complained anyway. All right, that's it for the back. So you saw the space in the back, and it was a little tight. But now I think you guys want to know how much does this cost? Because you can sacrifice a little bit, especially with the gas mileage that you're going to get out of this thing. So let's take a look at pricing, and then we're going to take it out for a drive. At the beginning of the video, I told you this was the most affordable Lexus that you can buy. And it has four basic trims with all-wheel drive variants for each. So we're going to start with the UX300 base, starts at $37,515. If you want all-wheel drive, it's going to add about $1,500 to the price. This one here is the UX300H Premium, and it starts at $40,715. Now this one does have all-wheel drive, so this one is about $1,500 more than that. And as this one sits with all of its options and the destination fee, we're looking at $46,255. Now, let's take this for a drive. All right, looks like we can do a 060 right now. Ready? A little brake torque. All right, one, two, three. Here we go. Oh, a little good thrust there. All right, not bad, there's 60. 
that's actually not bad i can't believe it says 7.9 that did not seem like eight seconds there or 7.9 seconds it felt more like maybe six that was crazy but i know it wasn't <laughs> Um, one big difference that I can tell, even though this has the same Prius hybrid system in it, um, is that it's not as loud. So that's where the you get that's where you get the Lexus part <laughs> of this car because the sound deadening in here is way better than that Prius. But that Prius is at a very very good price point and it's really hard to beat that price point with the gas mileage on top of that you're you're really uh hitting on something special there i think i would prefer this because of the looks of it on the inside the sound quality inside uh, the cvt is not near as loud and i don't know if that's because maybe it is a little bit different cvt um than what the prius was but it just seems quieter it could just be better sound deadening more materials in here because this is at a little bit higher price point i would sacrifice that though this car is really fun to drive it actually feels a little bit bigger than what it is unless you have someone in here next to you and when that happens then yeah it does kind of feel a little cramped but for a daily driver, a commute car, whatever, that's great. I mean, you're gonna get 42 miles a gallon average and we were averaging more than that other than the time now that the car just sat there while I was making this review. Other than that, it has done great. Uh, the drive is really good. Um, I haven't had any problems with the lane centering and lane keep assist. Uh, that stuff has been working great without any problems. The ride uh, comfort is really good. It's a soft ride. Um, it, it's not a sporty ride or anything like that. It's not stiff, it's not uh, jittery or anything. Uh, it just feels good. It feels like a good Lexus suspension. The only thing that I could see that I pointed out was the cup holder situation because they're so far forward that they sit right in front of your climate control button. So that could cause a problem. Most of the time it's not going to cause a problem with normal size bottles, but if you get something bigger or a bigger drink in here, it could uh, block those buttons. I also did mention that I didn't really care for the color of the seats that are in here uh, my wife likes them i didn't really care for it i'd like them to be a little bit more brown and not so yellow but you know that's just a preference thing that is nothing wrong with the car now you do have two trims above this one because this is the premium all-wheel drive there's also two f sport one that is more of a styling thing and then the other one is a handling so if you want a little bit stiffer suspension, a little bit more sporty ride to this, go for the F Sport handling. If you want a little um, more style to the outside, then you're gonna wanna get that F Sport uh, appearance. Uh, both of those also have all wheel drive variants to those. Um, I think they may come standard with all wheel drive, but I think they're optional uh, also. Well, I hope you enjoyed this if you did, Hit that like button and consider subscribing so you don't miss any more of these reviews. Then click on one of the videos that's up on the screen. One I chose for you, the other one YouTube chose for you. I think you're going to like them both. So have a blessed day and hopefully I see you in the next video.